Warning. I chain smoke and I say fuck a lot. But I accept myself for the way I am. I accept you too. Viewer discretion advised. Sex made her a star. Sex made her a felon. And for a time, sex made her a powerful player in Hollywood. Her black book contained the names, numbers, and sexual desires of some of the world's most recognized men. Politicians, actors, producers. She possessed information that could ruin studios, wreck marriages, and mangle reputations. Her name was Heidi Fleiss, Madam Hollywood. I'm sure most people remember the Heidi Fleiss scandal, but now we can take a look back in time and see if anything new pops out. One of the older men Heidi dated was a Hollywood producer named Yvonne Naj. Their relationship changed her life. Reporter James Bates. He was a producer, but not a real major player. He had done a, some TV episodes, I believe, Starsky and Hutch, and had done some, what you call maybe some B-level movies. But uh, surprisingly, not, a lot of people knew him or knew who he was. Uh, and that was a little bit surprising, given that he, he didn't have sort of an A-level -le -A track record. Naj ran with an elite crowd, went to elite clubs, and from all appearances had plenty of money. I heard elite twice and saw a mask. I don't know about this guy. For Heidi, he was perfect. Sometime in 1988, in the midst of her drug abuse, 22-year-old Heidi met Madam Alex, the reigning Hollywood madam of the 70s and 80s. Alex. I did a video not too long ago called The End of His Innocence, Don Henley Rapist, question mark. That November, holed up in his California mansion a week before Thanksgiving, the rocker made his usual call to his usual madam, number six, and he requested the usual for dinner. The usual for him meant young girls, and he had done this many times, both at home and on the road. Madam Alex. LA Times reporter, Sean Hubler. Depending on who you talk to, Heidi either was um, sold to Madame Alex for, to pay off a $450 gambling debt by Yvonne Nage. That's what Alex says. Um, and Heidi, Heidi says that Yvonne introduced her to Alex and Alex wanted to turn her out, but that um, she, but that uh, Heidi wouldn't do it. She was too proud. Um, Yvonne says that he met Heidi, went to Alex and said, well, I've got this new girlfriend. I'm very fond of her and she's great. And she says, oh, really? What's her name? I said, Heidi Flies. He said, well, i got a surprise for you. She works for me. Alex had one reason to accommodate her clients, especially good ones, money. Former prostitute Norma Jean Almodovar. In the 80s, you had the Arabs that were coming here. I mean, this town was filled with the oil money and the oil money flowed from the Arabs to the call girls, to the madams. They were making arrangements to send some women over to Saudi Arabia, I believe. Saudi Arabia? Are we talking about human trafficking? Alex not only let Heidi in on her work, she also let Heidi in on her secrets, including how Alex managed to stay in business for more than 20 years without getting busted. She was an informant. She was an informant for a number of years very carefully selected who she would snitch against and who she wouldn't. Despite all of Madam Alex's careful planning and precautions, Madam Alex was arrested for pandering. Alex's case would take two years to settle, and in that time, Heidi would make her move. After her arrest for pandering, Alex had to decide what to do with her single most valuable possession, her little black book with the names of her clients. No matter how Heidi got her hands on the black book, the names, numbers, and sexual desires found inside put her in business. I had this one guy that was a foot fetishist. And he's a very normal, quote unquote, uh, businessman. He's an attorney, actually. And he would, you know, bathe my feet and massage my feet. And he would, like, you know, suck sorbet off my toes and things Ugh, like that. And nasty he was feet. so enamored with my feet. He even went so far as to drop this, like, certificate, this piece of paper that certified that he had married my feet. And we had a ceremony and music and, like, we threw rice and everything. <laughs> And there's some that like to be tied up and spit on and verbally abused. Um, there's some that like to be burned with cigarettes. No matter the request, 
Heidi fulfilled her clients' wishes with business-like precision. But usually, the job was just demeaning and sometimes dangerous. Writer John Richardson. The thing you have to understand about that world is that it's not always nice in Hollywood. Some of the appetites of those people were not straight sex. It could get very sadistic and degrading. It degrading in a deliberate way and I don't think some of the things that a couple of the hookers told me that they had to do is not anything that you would send a friend or a slumber party mate to do. She for example had a big party at her house in October or in the fall of last year um, that was in honor of Mick Jagger for, uh, and that uh, Jack Nicholson was there. Jack Nicholson? Didn't Roman Polanski rape a 13-year-old girl at his house? Some celebrities that you think are the perfect family man, and they have the perfect wife and the perfect kids, and you would think, oh, you know, they're just... There's one celebrity in particular that when I found out that he was doing this, it broke my heart. I was a big fan. And he really does come across as the perfect family man. Um, how many kids do they have? They have two or three kids. He's a huge celebrity. Probably don't get any bigger than that. And when I found out that he was carrying on with one of Heidi's girls, I stopped going to see his movies. Other clients gave the girls away as gifts. L.A. Times reporter Sean Hubler. She was a very beautiful girl, long blonde hair, um, and uh, very, uh, very pretty, very kind of lost, kind of dizzy girl that um, got, kinda, got wrapped up in it. I really believe these guys liked her. She was somebody's birth. She was at a, at a party that I think Charlie Sheen gave her to somebody as a birthday present. What? Charlie Sheen giving girls away for birthday presents? We're talking about human trafficking? But some client requests weren't so harmless. The late Don Simpson, producer of Flashdance, Top Gun, and Beverly Hills Cop, was a regular Heidi client. According to former call girl and author Liza Greer, he was also one of the most dangerous. There's a girl that went to um, see Don Simpson. She's 17 years old, 16, 17 years old, beautiful little blonde girl from Newport, for God's sakes. So you know, she's from Newport. You know? From some place that was like, you know, she's never done a, she's never even worked before. You know, Heidi sent her on this. She got beaten to a pulp. Okay, screaming, bloody murder. Nobody goes in to save her, nothing. She comes out crying hysterically and tell me she will not be scarred for the rest of her life. And guess how much she got? A thousand dollars would be, you know? The girl's scarred for life in her head. You know, it just doesn't make sense, does it? It's just not worth any money in the world to go back to that kind of a business, you know? So let's see what this sick fucker produced. Just name a few flash dance, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, Top Gun, Days of Thunder, The Ref, Bad Boys, Crimson Tide, Dangerous Minds, The Rock. In a 1993 interview, Yvonne Naj claimed that studio executives not only condoned the use of prostitutes, they actually paid for their services. I mean, studio checks were used. I don't know how the checks were vouchered, but I know I saw one check, so I know that there's one check around that was being used. Alex had some friends, a lot of friends, on the police department, whether Beverly Hills or Los Angeles. And uh, she asked one of them, Detective Sammy Lee, if, she would, if they would go after Heidi to get even with her for stealing Madame Alex's book. And that was what precipitated the whole event. Oh, Hollywood and prostitution and Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen you know, big parties, and Peter Sellers' daughter, and they, they kept shaking their head because literally every sentence I s said had the name of some person that everybody knew. The mere mention of Heidi's customer list soon had Hollywood abuzz. Reporter James Bates. And then the week before that or so was, I mean, it was just the rumors were flying about what we were doing and what we were going to say and who we were going to talk about. I mean, there was just, it was really, I mean, I remember that week before was just, you know, it there was just was all sorts of buzz out there about right. what was going to pub, become public. On Sunday, August 1st, 1993, the story hit the front page of the Los Angeles Times. The article mentioned Heidi's Hollywood pals, including producer Robert Evans. Robert Evans, The Godfather, The Godfather 2, Charmatown, Urban Cowboy, Popeye, how to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. He was also one of the developers of Rosemary's Baby.
directed by Roman Polanski. Heidi teased the media by threatening to sell her black book for a million dollars. Heidi soon recanted her offer, saying it had been a joke. But names were flying around Hollywood anyway. One of the names being bandied about was that of a Columbia Studios executive. There were a number of blind items that were appearing in gossip columns about a, an executive at Columbia Pictures who was going to lose his job over all of this. The rumored executive was Columbia's head of production, Michael Nathanson, a friend of Heidi's former lover, producer Yvonne Naj. Then, on August 4th, 1993, Yvonne Naj was himself arrested for pandering. His arrest was enough to send Nathanson reeling. How seriously the entertainment industry is taking Heidi Fleiss and her book of names and phone numbers the police have confiscated, Columbia Pictures executive Michael Nathanson is publicly distancing himself from the alleged madam. Through his attorney, Nathanson denies any rumors that Columbia film production money was used to pay prostitutes. In hindsight, he probably regrets doing it because it, in effect, put his name out there. Somebody felt pretty fucking guilty, huh? Columbia Pictures immediately began a financial audit, looking for any evidence that studio funds were spent on call girls. No improprieties were found. Michael Nathanson, Empire Records, Copycat, Time to Kill, Records. LA Confidential, and a bunch of other shit I have not heard of. And the financial records had checks, personal checks. They had subpoenaed all of her financial records and all the financial records of people that were suspected to be her Johns. And so they uh, eventually ended up offering um, immunity to several of the guys that had the least to lose, um, getting them to testify uh, against Heidi. On July 8, 1995, Madam Alex passed away. That same year, Heidi began a well-publicized romance with actor Tom Sizemore. Heidi was back in court in August 2003, only this time as a victim. By then, her affair with Tom Sizemore was over, but Sizemore was on trial for abusing Heidi during their relationship. The relationship turned to be a nightmare because every day he's threatening me, he just beat the hell out of me. Sizemore was convicted of seven counts of battering and harassing Heidi. He was allowed to remain free pending appeal. Oh, and Tom Sizemore? Back in 2003, actor Tom Sizemore was reportedly removed from the set of a film after an 11-year-old actress claimed he molested her. Fucking stoned. I got 